We use gears to transmit power. Different sizes, different ratios, different shapes. The teeth take the load, but even on the largest gear, contact is concentrated on a small part of the tooth, so you get high stresses. High stresses occur wherever a load has to be carried on a small area. If the bearing surface isn't hard enough, something's going to give. Spread the load, and you reduce the stresses. An American gear engineer, Ernest Wildhaber, wondered if more of a surface could be put to work. He wanted to transfer more power through the same size of gear. The tooth design he patented in 1926 was based on the arcs of circles and had a convex concave profile. But the idea was not developed. In 1956, Colonel Novikov arrived at the similar design in Russia. His system was put into production. A report of its success appeared in the Manchester Guardian in November 1958. A lot more of the tooth surface doing the work. This was the beginning of three years hard work in our research laboratory. First, we had a closer look at the most common gear design, the involute. If you unwind a taut thread from a static reel, you have an involute curve. The shape of the involute tooth is based on this curve. The same tooth shape is used on both gears, the wheel and the pinion. They roll on their pitch circles. Where they meet is the pitch point. The involute gear maintains uniform motion because it obeys the Euler-Savari mathematical law. This states that a line passing through the point of tooth contact, the contact normal, must pass through the pitch point at all times. As the gears turn, this contact normal remains stationary, anchored to the pitch point. The teeth make contact along this line and nowhere else. We have uniform motion. The load passes smoothly. The tooth profiles are conjugate. But with the involute shape, the areas of contact are small. The stresses are all concentrated on a small part of the teeth. To spread them, we must change the shape of the teeth. Make one concave, the other convex. By making the tooth flanks conform, we could see that the load and the stresses could be spread over a wider area. With this new shape, the concave teeth are inside the pitch circles, the convex outside. The contact normal no longer passes through the pitch point at all times. We no longer have uniform motion. The tooth profiles are not conjugate. The load does not pass smoothly. The new shape can't be used in this form, but give it a twist. Making it helical, the areas of contact can overlap and move along the tooth face. This now is the circarx gear. Part of the tooth in mesh is always in contact. Once more, we have uniform motion. The load passes smoothly from one tooth to the next. To 
reduce wear, lubrication is used to keep tooth surfaces apart. Let's look at the contact area on the circarc. It rolls along the tooth face. This action forms a thick oil film on which the contact rides. On the involute, the slower sliding action displaces more of the oil, giving a thinner lubricating film. The thicker the oil film, the less the surface damage. The first industrial circuit gears were installed at this cement works to drive a conveyor from a dust extraction plant. That was in 1961, and since then they've been running night and day, needing only routine maintenance. teeth change their shape slightly under load. Variations in lubrication, temperature, and in the load must be allowed for. On the circ arc, the radius of these concave teeth is made slightly larger than its counterpart. It gives a working tolerance. The difference must be carefully calculated to retain a high load capacity. Gears, gearboxes, shafts, bearings are all machined and checked to a high degree of accuracy. Manufacturing techniques now match the precision demanded by the gear designer and engineer. But it has taken 40 years for Ernest Wildhaber to see his ideas developed and brought into use. Increased power through the same size of gear. Smaller gears and gearboxes needing far less space. These circuit boxes will transmit three to four times the power of an involute of the same size. The circuit design supplies the engineer with an economic gear system. It is going to make a lot of difference wherever we use gears to transmit.